Okay, we have our discharge set test set up. We have our 100 watts of halogen bulbs, which are going to get stinking hot. So I've got the fan blowing on them. They will be drawing 1.7 amps, as we will see here. This uh, meter measures the pack voltage, and there's the pack right there, nicely balanced and ready to go. I'm going to record the voltage and the current every, 30, uh, every 60 seconds so we can get an idea of how the pack is doing. I'm not going to record the light and the heat. I'm just going to keep the camera on the meters. And when I connect this magic thing, there will be sparks and we will be ready to go. Three, two, one. Contact. Okay, here it is the next day. We've given the pack some time to rest, and I just wanted to go over the data that I collected. You can see that I grabbed 115 data points. Wouldn't it be great if I had an automated way to collect, oh, I don't know, voltage and current measurements of a circuit? Maybe the flow of power in and out of a battery? Yeah, that'd be good. Maybe I should jump back on that project. But, so, let's check this out. So I stopped, my target stop voltage was 2.9, which is significantly above the 2.75 that the uh, specifications set, which gives us a pack voltage minimum of 46.4. As I started, uh, the amperage was about 1.7 amps. It's about 100 uh, watts of uh, heat and light coming out of those light bulbs. And the voltage was about 62. And it, um, it, it uh, came down fairly uh, slowly, as you can see. Let's just uh, go to the chart here. Came down fairly slowly, flattened out a bit, and then just fell off the table right here. Just plummeted. And if we look at the amperage also, you can see the amps kind of uh, came down a bit, flattened out, and then fell off the table. And if we go right down to the bottom of the graph, you can see that in the space of one minute, we went from uh, 51 volts to 49 to 47 to 46, and that's where I pulled the plug. So we were doing about 0.1 volts per minute, and then we were... There's a volt, there's a volt, there's a volt and a half, and another volt. So that was the end of the battery. The good thing is this discharge curve looks exactly like the specifications that we saw that come with the product. Now, we were running at um, uh, just under 2C. No, no, sorry, just under 1 half C. 1 half C would be 2 amps. 1C would be 4 amps. So we're treating the pack very gently. We can go as high as 3C, a maximum constant discharge, but that's going to shorten our pack life. That's 12 amps out of these poor little batteries, and I'm not going to punish them like that. And as you can see, 
when I disconnected the pack, it popped up from the last full load reading of 46, it popped up to 53. Now let's take a look at what happened when I measured the individual cells. Okay, so we can see the total pack voltage is 55.039 the next day, where I, after I let it rest, which means the pack bounced up over 8.5 volts from its full load ending cycle. So we do get significant voltage bounce out of a lithium pack. Now, this is what really surprised me. I checked the individual voltage of all the cells, and look how tightly clustered these are around 3.440, where it, this is 3.440, this is 3.439, 4420111133210000. This is only off one or two thousandths of a volt, except for cell number eight. This bad boy is at 3.425. That's only 15 thousandths of a volt below where we want, but that's one and a half hundredths, which is, you know, I'm not thrilled about that. I don't know why. Uh, cell 8 was one of the good ones. Uh, it was actually running a little high before we ran the discharge test. Maybe that's why. It was some kind of a negative uh, effect of this being uh, working too hard in the discharge. Um, and we actually, this is one that started out very high and then I bled it down to be uh, in line with all the others. Remember, this was the highest one. So this is how we ended up. But the batteries, I'm really surprised that they, uh, they maintained this within a couple of thousandths of a volt. That's really good. Um, poor number eight worked a little too hard. But, um, and as you saw in the video, the, the pack was stone cold. There was no temperature change. I, I checked it with my hand. I checked it with the infrared temperature sensor. Everything was great. Um, so yeah, this pack is viable. Now I have to build up a 20 cell pack and to do that, I have to, uh, make a larger printing surface in my 3d printer and print a 20 cell pack holder. So we'll see how that goes. As you stare out on my beach, I would ask you to subscribe to my channel and click like on this video so YouTube thinks I'm worthy again and I have so many people on my channel that they'll give me 10 cents a day in ad revenue. So I thank you for that.